I suddenly realized I don't need my glasses to speak just because I put them down all the time. I put them down all the time. There they are. But now I need my glasses to speak. It's okay. I know. I'm John Brown, uh, and this is, called, this is called Passage. That front door I made is still in good shape after all these years. The portal to my home, it has a large oval glass to let the light in. Everyone, everyone approaches and is met the same way. Neighbors, Jehovah Witnesses, pastime, out of town guests. The woman I married. Through and within the, that door is a warm glow, even with the lights out. Countless people pass through into and out of hardly notice, quiet and humble. When the children were small and they would sit on the floor with legs straddling the wide oak, oak bottom rail, grab the knobs and turn it into a swing side to side, not enough space to go too fast. Trusted old friend I have greeted and shaken hands with just about every day I have lived here. Over the years, we have both sagged. I know how to straighten those stiff boards. I wish the same could be said for me. I'm moving and will put my key in the lock and say goodbye. The next occupier of this home will receive the same undiscriminating treatment. And me, I look forward to meeting another friend similar to this one. Next. about where's the next generation. A, a little bit, but not intentionally. I stood staring at the small bare space, eight feet by five feet in dimension, with one window and a built-in closet delineated by means of French doors. The floors were a lovely polished oak like the rest of the rooms. It was obvious the space had been constructed for storage to the bedroom of this three-room apartment. How would I fit my gift here? My eyes closed as I tried to, tried to envision my gift in this space. There was no question. I had no choice. I had to make it work for the gift I was receiving, the gift I truly wanted. I took out my measuring tape and my small chick toolbox and began to calculate and contemplate the wood I would choose, the colors, the furniture. But I am not talented in fitting necessary pieces into small places and uncertainty and tears enveloped me. Yet as I began to work, a creativity I never knew I began, had began to flow, and with this, and the assistance of my tools, this small bare space was transformed into an enchanting and delightful room. Abracadabra, one, two, three. Three years, just like my gift. Two feet from our bed in this three-bedroom in this bedroom of this three-room apartment in just a few months after receiving my gift? I'll never do it. But my soul was arriving soon, and everything had to be in place. Of course, the slats of wood for the piece I was assembling had to be of regulation measurements, and although it was slated, slated, slated on the box, again, I took out my measuring tape, first to measure the space I was placing it in, and then to ensure that every slat was perfectly placed three inches from the one before it. I struggled to assemble the piece, knowing the tools I would need in those terribly complicated directions. But I drew on the strength of my father's talent, and after hours of struggling, it was completed. Again, I stood with tears in my eyes, trying to imagine what was ahead of me. Well there, my gift and my soul were well built. My heartbeat arrived four years later, Ah, but I was ready this time. 
Our three-room apartment was now an eight-room home, and my carpentry skills had improved. There were no tears, only cries of excitement and joy, as the same oak-looking floors were covered with drop cloths, and my gift and my soul contributed to readying the large 14 by 14 foot room. My heartbeat was making a known presence in the room, although not quite in the room yet, and I could feel what was needed. A Mayan Indian flow to the room, tan colors and designs, along with pieces from my gift and my soul. That was, that, that was what was needed for my heartbeat, and my gift and my soul agreed. And many years later, here they stand. My gift, Elise Amanda, my soul, Robert James, and my heartbeat, Jacqueline Suzanne. Their foundation much stronger than any cement or steel structure, solid and determined. Their framework supported by young but honest and true convictions. One of indignant righteousness, quick to uphold and slam down the hammer of justice. One strongly independent, ready to supplant and forge ahead with certainty to brand her patent mark in life. And one of unyielding strength of mind, breaking the norms of society while happily and successfully living within them. They are the best built structures I know, the ones I cherish and am the most amazed by. Their bodies and their minds are not mine, but they have always and will always be my gift, my soul, and my heartbeat, my children. I haven't done this in a couple of years, and uh, when, I, when the uh, Carter Poet started, I always thought that it would soon turn to uh, stand-up comedy and limericks. Um, I'm still waiting for Vinny to come out with that, some more of that, but he's become a poet. Yeah. And uh, sometimes Brooks is the most lewd in a very... Uh, Strange way. He's got so, something in his poetry, but not the same. Save the so, so here, here are some lyrics for you, John. You need a new poem, and here's one for you. There was a man from Nantucket whose plane wouldn't fit in his pocket, but the wood would scream, I'm happy with this machine. Now lay me down and don't stop it. All right, now. This one is by an 18th century guy, and I just thought, what the hell. Um, there was a young lady from Norway who hung by her toes in a doorway. She said to her beau, just look at me, Joe. I think I've discovered one more way. <laughs> That's kind of mechanical, but... Uh, all right, so here's my poem. Uh, it's called, I Build the World for You. In an early fall sunrise, exploding in orange and violet, I awoke to this splendid instant. My awareness was discovering the early morning beauty and catching a moment that I more often miss. Across the village, a man peddled, a cup of coffee in one hand, purchased in nickels and dimes. He was already at his place, digging in bits of debris and sand. This man, who had reefed top gallant sails 60 feet above gale washed decks, who had laid keels of ships and cut ribs using patterns he laid out on loft floors. Among the debris he found order from the piles of trash treasures. Here was a nickel, but here was a spar, masts, fore and mizzen, and eelgrass for lines. The sun rises, the conches assemble on the beach to announce the departure. A shaman boards the ship with this man's mother, she who smothered him in youth and drove him to the sea. She hurt while he wandered the world, but never forgot him. Now she boards grateful for his accomplishments. The rays of color explode and the ship departs. In the exalted color of this wondrous fall morning, to her and the world, he declares, I build the world for you. There once was a carpenter from Nantucket. When the, when, the, when the illegals came, he said, Fuck it. Right. One, more. one more. One more. I swear. I sat on a chair 
I'm getting relaxed now. I'm good now. <laughs> I sat on the chair. It gave me a splinter. Only it wasn't my finger that it got into. So, with tweezer in hand, I thought this would be easier if the damn thing were bigger. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. One of my heroes in life. It's not a true Carpenter poet reading without David Murphy. Yeah, I know. And he's not here tonight. Uh -oh. Perhaps he's in his redoubt up in the far reaches of northern New Hampshire. Sitting by the fire, thinking of us. Here's to Murph. 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 So we'll get as close as we can and read a poem by Murph. And it's called, of course, Murph Poem. <laughs> glasses for this one. Now, I want to thank again Bill Thibodeau and Tom Menahan for getting this book out. They work many midnight hour. And there were certain very dodgy, sticky poems that had to be gone over time and again. And this was one of them. <laughs> and I had it, Murph called it in on the cell phone. I had to listen to it about 20 times. <laughs> Murph poem. The right hand cuts. The slow hand is by. He plays the chords with the cut-off finger. The spirit, the muse, come to us this night and let music, wood, and spirit be all the same right now. Yeah.